Hello people, my name is Eloy Sanchez, a senior developer and a Web3 JS ambassador. Today I'm going to show you how to use the plugin Web3 Contracts. This video is mainly made for Web3 JS developers who want to enhance their knowledge on how to interact with Solidity Contracts. By the end of this video, you will learn how to use the library in order to simplify the interaction with contracts. In order to properly follow this guide, I would suggest to have a basic understanding of how JavaScript works. And please, don't forget to follow Web3.js on Twitter in order to stay up to date with the latest news and also join our Discord channel so you can meet all the Web3 developers and discuss any doubts. So people, with no further ado, let's start coding. First of all, we should create a directory using this command make dir. I will use this name for the folder, but it's up to you the name, whatever you like the most. Please press enter. Then let's cd inside the folder. And once inside the folder, let's initialize the project using npm init dash y. We use this flag in order to use to set actually all the values by default. Okay, perfect. Our package.json got created. Now in order to open the project in our Visual Studio code we should we really need to type code dot okay great. For the sake of simplicity for this tutorial, we are going to use the integrated terminal in the IDs ID. As I said before, we got the package to JSON already created. Now we should install the libraries. PM, Web3, of course, and we should also install the Web3 plugins contract for sure. forgot install perfect all the dependencies were already installed now we have to create the main file for that we can use the command touch with this command we will be able to create within the terminal any kind of file in that case we will do touch index .js perfect we got our main file here we should start importing web3 okay perfect then we, we, we should we should initialize web3 instance and give it a provider for that we should do Cons web3 equal to new web3 open parenthesis now again new web3 dot provider look autocomplete perfect hey this didn't work provider let's type it provider yes but we don't need this thing now Okay, I'm going to use this public node from Ethereum and put it here. When you use your own key, you should never commit, actually. It's highly, highly advisable. So, now we're going to need a key from Etherscan. We're going to call that API key. I will, <clears throat> I will, I will post the link in the description of the video of how to get the Etherscan key. Mine is this one. Okay. Now we have to do. Let me. We have to do. It's to load the plugin. I'm gonna. Sorry. Come here, scan key, 
load plugin. To load plugin, we need to do web3 again dot register plugin because we have to register the plugin. Okay, and then we do new contract plugin and we pass the API key. In order to import this method, which is not here, you can press command dot and be sure the code and you will get an autocomplete. Ah, he is not working. Okay, then we need to do import contract plugin from Web3 plugin contracts. Perfect. Great. Okay. Let me see if another, okay, everything looks good. Now we should use a verified smart contract. That this one you can use it in the documentation of the library. I will I will post the link on the video description. Let me see. Contract. Let's do const contract address. I'm going to get the contract. Okay. And now the cool thing comes. Now we can get the contract, contract source, we'd say includes. You can find also the source code of the contract. You can identify compiling information. I mean, by the version and ABI, you can find basically everything. Version, yeah, ABI. Okay, and for that we need to do cons data await, of course, <coughs> and then we do uh, web three dot contract plugin. So the completed here or suggestion, sorry. This one it's lowercase. And then we do source and we pass the contract address. Okay. And for that now we just need to do console log for example. Data. Okay. And let's see what we get. Okay. Yeah. Since I'm using ES modules. We need to set this value to modules in the package.json. Otherwise, in one word, let's see here, for example. Okay, so let's go back. Let's try again. Perfect. So we got the status, we got the message, we got the whole source code. Look. We got the ABI, we got the contract name, we got the compiler version, EVM version actually, proxy, we got actually everything. That's how that's how this plugin works. I mean the coolest thing is that you can you can interact with contracts without um, using any kind of metadata or ABI that you have to store here in a folder and sometimes it can be a bit annoying, you know. So basically you just need the RPC, URL, the API key, and the contract address. And that's all. On today's video, we learn how the contracts plugin works, simplifying contract interaction processes with Solidity-based smart contracts. This plugin addresses the challenge of officially interacting with contracts by eliminating the need of storing and managing contract instances and ABI, which is actually quite convenient. Consequently, it also enhances developer experience and project functionality by improving contract interactions, enabling smoother integration with external contracts and ultimately improving overall project efficiency. I encourage you to follow Web3.js on Twitter and also the Discord channel in order to be completely up to date with the latest news. Looking forward to talk to you soon.